In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to set up our character inside of Unity for Mechanim. Alright, so we brought in our character, and I went ahead and just applied some materials to it, so that way we can see that. And now we're ready to begin working with the export options, of or the import options of our FBX file. So we need to go to our Meshes folder, and select the FBX Biker, uh, that we brought in here. And our biker has a model, rig, and animations panel. So the first thing that we need to determine in our model panel is the scale factor. I've gone ahead and set this to 1 and then hit apply. Now by doing so whenever we bring this in it's going to make sure that our character is the same scale that whenever we um, we exported it out from Maya or 3ds Max whichever program you want to use. So now that I've done that, I've matched the scale that I want inside of Unity, I'm going to go to my rig panel. Now the rig panel is going to determine how the rig is going to be used in Mechanim. So as you can see here, we have two parameters. We have animation type and then we have root node. The first thing that we need to determine is going to be the animation type. So what kind of rig is going to be used? Let's go ahead and click on our generic pull down menu and you'll see that we get a couple of different options. We get legacy, generic, and humanoid. By default it will come in as generic. Legacy is used for animations and animation systems that are pre-mechanim. This is really not um, really not uh, encouraged to be used uh, because the mechanim system is really really great and it makes things so much smoother. Now the difference <clears throat> with the other two that we have. We have generic and we have humanoid. Generic and humanoid have the ability to use the full features of Mechanim. However, the difference between the two is that humanoid will um, allow you to retarget humanoid characters from one rig to another character mesh. Okay, So if I brought in, let's say, our female hero that we have in our uh, tutorials, uh, we could bring her in whenever she's rigged and skinned and we could actually use the animations that are on this character's rig. Okay, Now generic is used uh, the exact same way however it cannot be retargeted to. So generic if we brought in um, let's say our tick um, character mesh, okay, that enemy, we could bring that in and we would have to use the generic uh, rig here because it's not a humanoid. And I'll show you the difference here in just a moment. So if I switch this over to humanoid, you're going to notice that we get a couple of different uh, options and parameters. The first one is we need to determine the avatar definition. So are we going to create it from this model or do we want to create it from another avatar that is already in our scene? We'll talk about how to use this here in just a moment. Now the next thing that you have is configure. And whenever we are bringing in a character brand new to use in Mechanim, we need to make sure that we configure the rig to work for our mesh. So let's go ahead and click on configure and it's going to ask me to apply uh, the changes here. So I'm just going to hit apply. And then it's also going to bring up a setting here that may ask you to save your scene. Now if you want, I would go ahead and save the scene so that way your character will be there whenever we're finished mapping our character. So whenever we hit configure, you'll notice that your character comes up and he may be in a T-pose and you may see a couple of different things. You may see some green bones like this, you'll see some gray bones, and it's even possible that you might see some red bones. Now what that means is whenever you see red bones, that means that those objects are not in T-pose. So I've just rotated this bone here away and you'll notice it says character is not in T-pose. So if this is the case for your character, you may have to uh, come in and use the automatic mapping and then also uh, force T-pose. So let me show you what that looks like. First of all, the mapping is in conjunction with what's up here. So here you can see that we have our body and our body is made up of different targets. So we have our hips, our spine, and then we have an optional target which is our chest. And you'll see that here we have some transforms or bones that are tied to those. You can go through and you'll see the left arm, the right arm, the left leg, and the right leg. And again, you'll see all of these different targets and optional targets. You even have the ability to look at the head specifically and target it. 
the left hand, and the right hand. But right now we're just going to be dealing with the body. Now if your character is having some trouble and we're missing some mapping here, we can always go to Mapping and then Auto Map. Okay, and that will try to fill in the blanks for you. Now if you're still having errors with that, you may have a problem with your hierarchy in your joints. So you'll want to take care of those and try to get that uh, back in order. Now after you have mapped your character, you want to go ahead and set its pose proper. So here you can see that we have pose. And right now we have three different assets, or three different parameters. We have reset, sample bind pose, or enforce t-pose. Enforcing the t-pose is going to make sure that it gets rid of any of these errors. Sometimes whenever we use enforce t-pose, that could cause some, some odd rotation in, uh, for example, some of the fingers. So you may have a thumb that is actually poking through the other side of the hand, or something like that. Now if you need to, you could always grab an individual bone and rotate it however you need to. Now you need to make sure that it is rotated in a position that you get the all clear to where the bone is actually highlighted in green. Alright, so now that we've discussed uh, that, let's go ahead and talk about how we can manually configure our bones because right now you can see that we have a couple of gray bones and these are considered additional bones. They will still be used by the mesh, however, um, they're not going to be used the proper way. So if I were to use this, uh, this configuration, my arms would be offset a little bit. And the only reason that it has not picked up this lower arm bone is because there's actually a bone right here at the elbow, and it thinks that that is the lower arm. So sometimes we may have to correct it. So the way that we take care of this is by coming in here and going to uh, our bones, okay, in our configuration. Let's go to our body here. And in the body, we want to go to our right arm. So we'll find the right arm, and then we're going to go to lower arm, and you'll see that there is a parameter set there. If I left click right there in the scene, you can see that it's selected, and it's selecting this bone right here. If I select the pick, option here. This is going to bring up a dialog box and we can actually pick which bone we need this to be. Now I know that this is going to be the right elbow B. So if I select that you'll see that that highlights in green and that is the uh, the result that I'm looking for. So if I double click on that it's going to select that and input that into the proper place. Let's do that for this side as well. So we're going to go to our left arm and on our left arm we have our lower arm. We're going to pick the elbow B, double click on that, and there we go. Another thing is the chest. It's using this as the chest bone, and I want this one to actually be the driving force to be retargeted to. So, with my chest, I'm going to go up to the body, and here's the chest, and you'll notice that there is this dotted line around uh, that icon there. That means that this is an optional bone. You don't necessarily have to have that. Okay. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say this needs to be spine D. You'll see that's highlighted in green there. Double click on that to just get rid of that and pick that in that position. All right, so now let's go to our lower legs, and you'll see that we kind of have the same situation that we had with our arms. So if I go to my lower leg or left leg, lower leg, we'll pick, and we're going to use the left knee B. Let's do the same thing for our right leg and we're going to use right knee B. So now that we have configured that the way that we want, that's going to give us the best result, and now we can go ahead and hit apply. It will apply those changes, and now we can hit done. Now notice that whenever you hit done, your character pops into position here to where it's grabbing the gun. Now this gun right here, this is just in the FBX file, and I only use this as kind of a placeholder. We'll be removing this later on, but I just wanted to have that there. It's not an important piece right now, so that's just kind of a side note. <laughs>